setup is working. Can you see right. me? Can you hear me? Everything well, right? Yeah, what about me? I look great. <laughs> yeah, you look perfect. It's such a pleasure. Today, we're speaking to Faraz Hamid. He's been a previous TechVis and PostVis supervisor for some of the greatest movies ever made. He's been a supervisor for Alice in Wonderland, The Dark Knight Rises, Interstellar, Gravity, Doctor Strange, Solo, A Star Wars Story, The Hobbit, Jurassic World, the upcoming Black Widow and Venom. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for being in the channel. Great, thanks very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Right now here uh, it's 3 p.m. and for you it's 9 p.m. Yeah, the, yeah. the night's just got started, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time and you are a huge inspiration, I think, because I really want to talk about previous because I don't feel like that's a very known topic. I don't think a lot of artists know like the cool thing that go behind the scenes. A lot of people hear animation and they're like, oh, I want to be an animator, right? But I want to kind of let people know all the amazing things you've been doing in your in your career. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how's it been, like your milestones in your career? Yeah, uh, so I started about more than 12 years ago in VFX, a long time ago. And one of my first jobs was at MPC in an advertising position. Uh, so I was a generalist. And I've been doing all sorts of jobs, so I mainly concentrated in animation. And then out of the blue, this job came up for a film called 10,000 BC, um, a Roland Emmerich movie. And they're looking for previous artists and I was like, oh, I never heard of a, what a previous artist was in, in those days either. So I said, let's try it. You know, they're animating, you know, creatures. It's kind of a cool show. So, you know, I applied and they I had a meeting with them and stuff and it went well. So they said, I said, like, let's give it a go. So it's really my first job at previous. And I, I never heard what previous was at that time. And uh, it was amazing because suddenly we were <clears throat> not just animating monsters for the movie. We were designing shots, you know, of how they might be shot. Uh, and then we're putting together like little animations together of what these the fight action sequence would look like and then and I was having meetings with the VFX supervisor I was having meetings with Ronald Emmerich the director and then I was having meetings with the production designer and then suddenly out the blue they go right we're gonna fly you out um, to set because the director wants you to be there while filming I was like okay great so they flew like I think about six of us to New Zealand they put us in a um, like a five-star uh, chalet and they drove us up a mountain every day uh, into a ski hotel uh, where we used to make the previous uh, while they were filming the movie just outside the on, on the mountains which we were based at so <laughs> yeah so it was amazing and i was like wow is this previous <laughs> <laughs> is this the life i'm expecting from now on that's insane yeah, yeah. but um so that was my first foray into previous but uh, and it was great because we were having meetings with a, the editor and a director and, and this was really, really different from what I experienced uh, before when I was working at MPC and DNEG and all these other places because, you know, traditionally VFX is you just sit in an office with a bunch of guys and, uh, with, um, and girls and then you put some visual effects together and then you send it to a client and then hopefully a few days later you see the shotgun update with a status of, you know, complete or uh, <laughs> needs a revision, right? <laughs> totally. Um, but here we were, like trying to design a movie with, um, by getting into a room with all these creatives and you know coming up with ideas of how to make the action exciting and really cool. And that was my first foray into it. And then, you know, and I, and you, when you're into this, it's oh cool, I'm just designing, you know, cool animation. But uh, over the years, you know, since I since then, I was working on all sorts of movies with Tim Burton and Christopher Nolan and all these other directors. And I've been really really lucky. Um, but you realize previous is more than just creating animation for uh, people. It's suddenly you have to be uh, an expert in cameras. You have to be really good and quick at animation. You have to be sometimes a generalist by building models, interacting with production designers, putting together a set. Yeah. Uh, and then you have to be like working with stunts. So you make sure that the stunts are in correctly shot and be able to, uh, you know, be able to put the action in because it's nothing worse than designing an action scene and finding out the stuntmen can't do it or they don't want to do it or they have a better idea and, and then they you want to interact with them so there's that and then you have to work with special effects who have all these complicated rigs to make sure the explosions happen right the vehicles spin in a certain kind of way and then <clears throat> and then at the same time when you're filming all this you have to provide a lot of technical data to the set so they know how you know, how many people they need on scene, how long's the shot, how many camera lenses they need on set, um, how big the cranes are, 
all these questions start coming, you get bombarded with, and it's like, hang on a minute, I was just an animator designing yeah, these sequences, like, and next what? thing I know, I'm, I have to be an expert on set. And like, you know, for a lot of us in, at the time, we've never been to set. So we, <laughs> we, it's like, I don't know how, how big a techno crane is. Yeah. Um, so, but we had to learn it really, really quick. And it was really exciting because suddenly, you know, the idea of what a visual effects artist had changed for us. And, you know, 10 years ago, you know, VFX was still quite new in film. Um, mm -hmm. So people were learning at the same time. And so the role of previous has changed a lot. So suddenly we're wearing lots of different hats. We're not just guys that are designing action sequences, we're people who are providing technical data to set. We have to know what other departments do and be really um, conscious about how they design sets um, and what's achievable with cameras and what's... So suddenly I need to be expert on different types of cameras. Like I need to know my Sony cameras, I need to know my uh, Harry lenses, yeah. and all these different things. It's like, so you were constantly learning, um, but it's really, really great, you know. So, you know, it's a job that where you're continuously learning and you're interacting with all sorts of different people, and you have to be on a set. And then over time, there was a, in the early days, you know, when we turn up to set, we would get told off, like, "What are you doing here? You should be back in the office designing it previous." But uh, as that has evolved, we said to them, "It's like, look, if you want us to do design shots that are realistic to shoot, you have to let us come to set." And see how you shoot it because I've never seen you use a techno crane. Crane, I've never seen you crash a car uh, <laughs> on ropes. I've never seen you, you know, stunt man, you know, jump off a of twelve-foot building or something like that. And so I need to understand that. And they go, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and some, and still today, you know, previous artists are still told that they can't be on set. But you know, if you develop a relationship, which we have to, because it's you know, it's a it's a service-based job where we you know we have to interact with all sorts of different departments you have to be there where you feel like you're there to help people and give them sure. solutions and make making the film process easy so it's beyond just doing vfx now it's being part of that filmmaking process so that's how it's really evolved for me and you know as i've been able to um make more films i get more experience i've worked on bigger films i've worked from some 10,000 bc i worked my way up to becoming a vfx supervisor i'm sorry a previous supervisor uh, and working on other films like, you know, Interstellar and uh, the, the Marvel films, which are really, really big and yes. take up a lot of your life. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Lucas films like Han Solo, that was really, really good. I learned a lot in that show. And uh, you were and doing so a bunch of things there in Solo. Yeah. So it's it's been a really cool career. You know, when you look back, it's been like, oh, that's pretty cool, actually. I, I've met Tom Cruise. I've met Daniel Craig on set. I've had meetings with them as well to talk about action cool. scenes. It was really, really cool. I've also been shouted at on set. I've been told off. I've been, uh, uh, I've broken things on set on Han Solo. I stepped for a, fr a <laughs> Tell set us about that. Now we want to know. Yeah, I yeah. mean, me and, well, basically on that show, because it was being filmed in London, they were mm -hmm. going to take the um, post to uh, America. So we, ha I had to hand it over to a a, a, like a previous soup in America. So he came down and I did a handover. But while we were on set, I was like, hey, do you want to go on set? Goes, yeah, 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 let's go to set. We so took our cameras. We were pretending to take, we were pretending to take set data. Like we're taking photographs. Saying, oh yeah, we just want to know how big this place is. I want to take some reference to set. But what we were really doing, we were taking holiday snaps for him. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. So, uh, you know, I was climbing some pieces of set and I was like taking a picture of him against the uh, Millennium Falcon and my foot went through the floor. No way. Very, delicate part of the set and oh my god <laughs> I dropped like a foot into the floor and my friend goes oh what are you doing and I was looking around oh god I hope no one saw me I just jumped <laughs> off and ran away and god knows how expensive those things are right all the props yeah. and everything oh <laughs> my god and how did it went afterwards I don't think anyone found out I was quite happy <laughs> but on the same now day while we're doing our family photos for, on yeah. the set, we we uh, we were lucky enough to have, see George Lucas talking to Kathleen Kennedy, and I had my camera. I was like, "Okay, this is it." I went up to take a photograph, and my phone decided to take a flash at the same time. No. <laughs> this is like super secret. Like you cannot do that. And no, every time every, anyone's having like a meeting or something, oh my god, it's insane. And yeah. did they tell you anything? No, we we ran for it after that. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't hang around to see what happened next. Could you explain? A little bit about what previs, techvis, and postvis are. Yeah. Kind of like the differences. So previs is like a very 
like you have, I don't know if you guys seen like animatics, but animatics is like an animated storyboard. So people grab, like draw these storyboards to make an action scene, and they put it together like an animatic, which is like an animated storyboards. So we're then like the next level up for previous. So we take sometimes storyboards where we work just from a script or work from nothing, just from a couple of words, and we make an action scene in Maya uh, using characters, and we animate. Basically, do an animated sequence, you know, so a very crude one. It's not the best animation, always. Sometimes it's chess piece, but we make a crude animation of the action scene. So, you know, a typical action scene will last like two to ten minutes, and we make a previous of that. Uh, so this animate, and it's usually like got lots of lots of bells and whistles. Sometimes we have to animate the mouths and the, and the expressions, and we have to add some of the explosion and effects where we add lighting um, and simulations now. And now we also add Unreal to make it look as good as possible. So it's like an animated sequence. Yeah. Um, and it's become a bit of a, a war zone now, previous, because this previous is not just a design of an action scene, because um, the visual effects supervisor and the directors, they take that animation and they show it to the studio going, look, look how good our previous looks. <laughs> um, and then they get notes back and then the, the studio takes the previous animation and then they show it to the marketing, they show it to the distributors and they go, this is what the film might look like. Um, so that's the previous, and then once they've done that, they'll take it to the what they call head of the department meetings um, <laughs> on set. So all the heads of the department will sit around and review the previous, and they go right. This is the previous action sequence we want to design. Uh, uh, you want to want to shoot, and all the different departments will take that previous and take it apart. Okay, and we'll see. Okay, right. The costume department goes right. I need twenty costumes for that shot. I need twenty costumes on that day, and I need. And then also the lighting department that goes, okay, right, uh, this is the white shot, I need a crane for that. And um, art department goes, right, you've put 20 chairs and I only have a budget for five chairs. Why did you do that? <laughs> or why did you put a tank in there? And some, someone from vehicle comes along and like, well, have you got a tank in there? He goes, well, the director asked for it. He goes, well, we don't have a tank. He goes, well, you better go and buy one. <laughs> <laughs> Get one right now. Uh -huh. Yeah, so this is what happens in previous when we yeah. make it. It goes to all these different departments and it, uh, it sets off a chain reaction and then they can start budgeting. We're like, okay. This shot is going to cost us fifty mil, not a fifth, sorry, fifty thousand to shoot, um, or this shot will cost us, uh, you know, sixty thousand in VFX. This shot we can shoot with a um, with an actor. This one we can shoot with a stuntman, so that we can decide what days to shoot on this. So this is what we do in previs, is designing this animated sequence. Um, after that is the, what we call tech viz. So after we've shown it to everyone. Um, and they've approved it, which rarely happens because most films now they never pre approve previous until the film's out now. But uh, <laughs> so we, we, yeah, so we are constantly design, redesigning and designing the previous because they're never satisfied. They keep changing their minds, which is normal now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, become but like challenging. A... Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you've probably seen in VFX, you know, you can work in a shop for like six weeks and find out it's been cut. Um, Even longer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I worked in a whole movie and had the whole sequence yeah. removed. <laughs> totally. Oh, I, that sucks. Yeah. So yeah. tech this comes afterwards, and they're kind so of it like. It comes afterwards. So mm -hmm. in theory, previous is finished, which we're saying <laughs> it doesn't. But if we assume it's finished, we take a previous and we turn it into tech this. Well, what it means is like you take a shot, and we we output the camera data. So we say, right, this camera is five foot from the ground. It travels, you know, a hundred foot. It travels at this speed, and. We, we, show, we do all these diagrams for them, we show them how many actors it, they're in there, we show them the, the set, so, you know, rather than the previous where you see what we might, the movie might look like, we put the set in instead, so you can see where the green screens are, yeah. you can see where the rigs are and all that stuff, so that's what we do in pre uh, tech viz now, and we feed this to different departments, um, and then they tell us, that, oh, you got your dimensions wrong, you're using inches <laughs> instead of feet and stuff like oh. that, but... But that's a very that's one of the toughest parts of the job because that's when you have to be really really tech savvy and 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 the hardest thing is sometimes the well quite often the technical aspects change so for example they say right right if we're going to shoot this on a, a handheld then it's going to be shot um, with the actor and then tomorrow they go actually we don't have the actor and we don't have the camera anymore we have we need we need to do it on a techno crane can you do tech this right now so yeah so how soon do you need it we need it well we're shooting in five minutes and you're like ah <laughs> She was like, I'm under the clock because, oh, quick, i got to do the previous. What? Do the previous. Yeah. Wow, that's insane. It happens insane. quite often. Yeah, wow. Yeah, or, and then that happened on a couple of films where I get, I'm sitting on my desk and I get a phone call. It's like, right, we're shooting this shot sequence right now. Can you list, give us a list of all the lenses that you we, that we are supposed to use? And you're like, what? <laughs> what? Here's my list. And then five minutes later, well, we don't have those lenses. Do you have another? Uh, can you put it? <laughs> can you do the tech vis on a different lens? Go, yeah, how do you need it? Like, 
We needed it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the the pleasure of doing previews before. So right, right. when I was in Mr. X, I had the opportunity of some of us in the animation department were chosen to sort of initiate this this film, and it was really fun, like having this experience with the cameras, with the characters. I think it's it's really interesting. But this tech vis is like completely different. And post this. Post vis. Okay. So yeah. <clears throat> post is a little bit easier. We actually prefer post vis <laughs> because. The filming's done, okay? Like they, everyone's, all the film crew's gone, packed up, and gone to the next film. And now we go. We usually go into another office, another building, another country, and we sit with the editors, basically, in the VFX department. And we start reassembling the whole movie, so they get all the live footage, you know, and they stitch it together to make the movie. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a very crude movie because it doesn't have sound effects, it doesn't have visual effects, and then they ask us to put all those, replace all the green screens, and then add all the. CG characters on the background. Really? Okay. And it's a really fast turnaround because you know when we do it, when we give it to VFX, you know it takes can take weeks or months before they put the characters in because of all the you know the pipelines and making sure the simulations are correct, making sure the assets are correct, and you know all those different departments involved to make a VFX shot. But obviously studios can't wait weeks or months to see these shots, right? They just you know very impatient people, and <laughs> so they go, okay, so why don't you previous guys? Take the take all that footage and put the previews on it. So that's what we do. We take the we take the footage. We track it ourselves. So we have our own trackers. Okay. So we track the sequences and then we put the previews back on, which is not a straightforward process because you have to kind of rethink it. You know, the dinosaur that was twelve foot is now six foot. Okay. Um, and then the camera that should have tilted like all the way up is only tilting halfway up. So you're like, <laughs> oh god, how do I how do I fix this? Um, yeah. So you reassemble these shots, and so quite often they don't shoot the shots that you you tell them to design, and then you know then you sit there with the editor going right. Well, the DOP decided to do something <laughs> different that day, and instead of looking you know east, he decided to look west, yeah. and um, so you got to fix it. <laughs> totally. Oh, I can only imagine. Let me know in the comments down below which movie that Faraz has worked on have you liked the most. If you like this video, there's more of this interview coming your way next week. And here are some bits and pieces of our next one. And for example, for somebody who's like never worked in a studio, can yeah. they build a strong demo reel for them to get into this and into, into previous in general? Alfonso Cuaron, Christopher Nolan, Tim Burton. Have you had difficulties kind of adapting to a certain style? Are there any like key elements to make a narrative work regarding the genre? It's yeah, no, it's a really good question. It's, it's, yeah. it's probably one of the best questions I've been asked in previous. Oh wow! Yeah. Subscribe, <laughs> subscribe to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to please hit that like button, that notification bell, and that subscribe button. That really helps me. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting my channel on Patreon. I deeply appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and keep making art. You beautiful artists!